In the 2024 MotoGP season, Ducati appears to be unbeatable thanks to a new bike that is a definite improvement over its title-winning rival from 2023 and a strong lineup of riders. The Italian manufacturer's greatest challenges lie off the track, even as the rivalry on it can blow up. The performance advantage provided by Ducati's MotoGP bike will enable the Borgo Panigale executives to implement a cost containment strategy in order to compensate the remaining manufacturer's riders as of the conclusion of Bagnaia's two-year contract extension to the end of 2026. Pre-season testing at Sepang and Los Sale revealed that the upcoming season, which begins in Qatar on Sunday, might very well be a carryover from the previous one, in which Bagnaia won his second consecutive MotoGP title. Welcome to Bike GP. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for more updates. The Bologna-based manufacturer would be celebrating its third consecutive title and fourth overall if that were verified with any of the Desmo Sedici riders, since it dominated every facet of the sport. With his contract renewed and at the height of his abilities, Bagnaia takes on the beginning of the championship. For his part, Jorge knows that this is most likely going to be his final season, wearing Pramac overalls. Together with Enea Bastianini and Franco Morbidelli, they will all benefit from the GP24's quality improvement over its predecessor, which Mark and Alex Marquez will ride at Grassini, as well as the VR46 duo of Marco Bezzecchi and Fabio Di Gianantonio. Ducati is expecting that this lineup would help them become competitive once more on the track, especially because the Japanese manufacturers, Yamaha and Honda, are falling behind, and the Aprilia and KTM bikes aren't yet reliable enough in all weather and circuit circumstances. This should also enable Ducati to address one of its main internal issues, which is reducing the amount of money it spends on rider salaries. According to a senior Ducati official, the wars and conflicts that are going on are the reason why the global economic climate is not very stable right now. Furthermore, Ducati does not want to commit to paying amounts that will become difficult to pay in a year or two. You must keep in mind that we sell 60,000 motorcycles annually, which puts you in a different league than companies like Yamaha and Honda. Both parties are satisfied with Bagnaia's renewal. Before he won the MotoGP World Championship in February 2022, he signed his last deal. Both his status and his pay have significantly changed since then. The terms and statistics of that contract were fairly similar to those of Bastianini's and Martin's agreements, but he is now on a different footing because of the performance bonuses. According to Martin's agent, Albert Valera, it is true that the basic amounts of Peco, Enea, and Jorge were even. But what he gets is significantly impacted by the two titles. Ducati gives financial rewards to the top three finishers in the World Championship, and this is mirrored in a raise for the subsequent year. The extension of Bagnaia's contract was announced on Monday and calls for a basic pay of about 7 million euros. Depending on the outcome, he may be able to add more money to that total, perhaps exceeding 10 million euros if he is able to hold the title once more. These values, while clearly highly relevant, are unrelated to those paid in the pre-pandemic period five or six years ago. The 25 million euros that Ducati gave Jorge Lorenzo during his two years there, in 2017 and 2018, are no longer available. After Andrea Dovizioso left the team in 2021, and Bagnaia, a former Pramac employee, became over, the money set aside to pay the riders' salaries was cut by more than half. Since Ducati now hopes to carry out that strategy, it is quite unlikely that Martin would wear Pramac colors after this season. The Spaniard is the greatest example of this goal to lower the investment in riders. As the championship runner-up, he also profited from the kind sponsorship of the company that sponsors him. What Ducati doesn't want to do is to commit to paying figures that in one or two years' time will be hard to afford, because Jorge battled Enea for a promotion to the works team in 2022. His case was special. Ducati matched the conditions because both of them would have earned it. That's now finished, a person departing the Ducati workshop said. Jorge is well aware that his final year at Pramac will be in 2024. According to the insider, there was always the intention for this satellite team to act as a springboard for the younger riders, helping them get ready to join the work squad. However, in order for it to occur, the pay must reflect that mindset. A satellite team rider cannot receive a base salary of 2 million euros from Ducati. Fairman Aldeguer is the rider who most embodies the concept Ducati plans to use for this nursery of future factory riders. The Spaniard has already committed to competing in the Premier class in 2025, when he will drive a Desmo Sedici, operated by Pramac. 
According to Aldegar's deal, his compensation will be capped at 300,000 euros and will be increased based on his performance. Ducati enjoys an advantage because it is the best bike on the grid. Not just with novices either, who elect to forego financial gain in exchange for the opportunity to ride the greatest bike on the grid. The same holds true for riders with Marc Marquez's caliber. Ducati has announced that incumbent double champion Francesco Bagnaia has signed a new two-year deal ahead of this weekend's Qatar MotoGP, which kicks off the season. According to the anticipated agreement, the Italian who began racing in MotoGP in 2019 with Pramac Ducati will be stuck with a factory Desmo Sedici until at least the end of 2026. Right now, Bagnaia is trying to become the third consecutive three-time MotoGP champion in the four-stroke era, a feat currently held only by Valentino Rossi and Marc Marquez. I am so happy to continue racing with the team of my dreams, stated Bagnaia. It is an honor for me to wear these colors. It's wonderful and something to be proud of. My crew, Ducati, and all the men at Ducati Course have worked together to accomplish amazing feats. We will keep working hard to be as successful as we can during the next three years, which includes 2024. I am overjoyed and ready to hit the track in Qatar for the first race of the year. Gigi, general manager of Ducati Course, continued saying, We are thrilled to have Banyaya back with us for 2025 and 2026. Together, we have authored a significant chapter in the history of motorcycle racing. Peco became the first Italian rider to win a MotoGP world title while using an Italian bike, the Desmo Sedici GP. Together, we restored a rider's world title that had been absent for 15 years, and we achieved the same feat once more the previous year. He is a two-time world champion and has repeatedly shown that he is deserving of the number one on his bike's fairing. Along with these accomplishments, Bagnaia keeps proving that he is in complete harmony with his team and bike. It was only natural for us to want to stay with him because of all these factors. We are therefore excited to begin this new chapter together and are sure that we can accomplish more significant goals. Bagnaia is the first Ducati rider to sign a contract for 2025. While there have been rumors that Moto2 star Fairman Aldegar will be joining Pramac for the same year. As Bagnaia's current Ducati Lenovo teammate, Enea Bastianini, will be under pressure to hold on to the valuable ride going into the 2024 season from riders such as Jorge Martin, the reigning Promac title runner-up, Marco Bezzecchi, and maybe new Grassini rider, Marc Marquez. In addition to Banyaya, the three MotoGP riders with definite spots on the 2025 grid are Brad Binder, KTM, Luca Marini, Honda, and Johan Zarco, Honda. Ducati will want to retain Marquez if he performs at the high level that many anticipate in 2024. This would require a move to either the factory team or the Prima Pramac Ducati squad, where he would ride the company's state-of-the-art equipment. If KTM wants to make a big signing, they may challenge Ducati, but the most likely scenario is that Marquez stays at Ducati. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comment down below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for new upcoming videos of MotoGP. Thanks for watching!